Good morning, Sunday School. Uh, first thing is, I want to say that uh, we miss being with you and that we uh, love you very much. So uh, look forward to being back together again. I have a question for you this morning, and that is, what would a Sunday School lesson look like if we could see it through God's perspective, through like a real spiritual perspective? And so that's what we're going to end up doing this morning is taking a look at that. Um, we're going to do it by putting on fake spiritual glasses and watching what it would look like. There won't be really any sound at that time in, in the spiritual part, but uh, we'll watch that and then we'll rewind it and then we'll watch it again in real life. So uh, I actually have a quote that I've heard many years ago that's always been kind of uh, dear to me, that uh, kind of sums up what a Sunday school lesson is like in a spiritual perspective. And when a Christian wants to share the gospel message, or a Sunday school teacher wants to teach a Sunday school class, this quote is very applicable. It's just one beggar telling another beggar where to find the bread. And so now, if you would for me, I need you all to look down, close your eyes, and put on your fake spiritual glasses. So if you look up now, and nothing's quite in focus, maybe look back down again and readjust your glasses like you would a pair of binoculars. So now, if you'll look down and take off your spiritual glasses, we'll watch this in real life. You know, uh, when Christ was tempted in the wilderness, my family and I just happened to see this when we watched the uh, over uh, on Easter Sunday, the rare, very old movie, The Greatest Story Ever Told, When Christ Was Tempted in the Wilderness. This used to be one of my favorite passages to read when I was a little kid. It's in Matthew 4. But one of the things that Jesus says is, man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And Jesus also said in, in John 6, 35, he said, he declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Uh, so now you saw it both ways, and through spiritual glasses and just in a normal sense. 
And uh, there's actually five points that I would like to make to, uh, for you. Uh, and I know all the teachers would certainly agree with me. Uh, we, we feel like we don't have a lot to offer, that we are indeed beggars, but we're counting on God to uh, bring that word to life in your hearts. So point one, a question, especially for those of you who are young, but for all of you, is are you thankful to have a home and parents, to have a church and a Sunday school that are feeding you spiritually? Point number two is for those especially who are getting to be a little bit older. You know, physically, when we grow up and we mature, uh, we need to eat a little more than we did when we were young. And so point number two is, as you mature in life, not physically, but spiritually, are you only eating spiritually once a week? Point number three Again, probably for those of you who are older, have you come to the realization that you are just a beggar? Have you realized it's going to take something more outside of you uh, to, sus to sustain you spiritually? Point number four, and this is again for the older group probably a little bit. Um, now, I think you're all great kids, but this is a question that needs to be asked sometimes. Uh, have any of you began to resist spiritual food? And if you have, I want you to ask yourself a question. Has your life become more fulfilled or does it feel leaner and less satisfying than it was before? So I'm going to uh, also, as you know me, I like songs. Songs speak a lot to my heart. I want to recommend a song to you. It's... Uh, Matthew West, Broken Things, and Byron's going to put a link in the description. I'll have a specific one that has the lyrics. Maybe you could watch it today or sometime this week. Maybe you could watch it with your parents. Uh, it has the lyrics that pop up, and maybe your parents can explain to you the time in their lives when they realized they were just a beggar in the presence of a king. And uh, you're probably thinking, I forgot point five. But I didn't forget point five. So to finish up with point five, put on your spiritual glasses. I mean, hey, man, eat the, eat the bread, Jack. Says right here on the label, contains all your daily servings of nine spiritual fruits and vegetables. Faith, hope, love, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, goodness, temperance, and faith. <laughs>